Hey everyone, a little uh, extra update today. Uh, I was sitting around here at the office talking. Uh, everyone knows me, Roger Veer, Bitcoin.com. Usual guest, our resident genius, uh, Gabriel Cardona here. <laughs> Did you have an official title at Bitcoin.com? Yeah, Director of Developer Services and Head of uh, R&D. Or resident genius, either one's Thank fine. You. We have a, a second resident uh, genius right here, Emma Oldenburg, our CTO here as well. Yes. And I, I wanted to, to talk with him, uh, and I did it once off camera, and I thought, oh, we should have been recording this. But like, I see a lot of these trolls on the internet that are really mad about like our awesome candy machine we have here that uh, you can pay in Bitcoin Cash and instantly the candy pops right out. And I see these people saying, oh, Lightning Network is way faster. Oh, and they're just plain wrong about that. Like, uh, that's, I see them saying that and, and no, like on-chain transactions with zero comp for every bit as fast, if not faster than Lightning Network transactions. And Emma was explaining a little bit about the exact reasoning why, but uh, either of you, you want to jump into the? Well, b both the Lightning Network and the Bitcoin Cash Network, they're peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, it's just nodes connected to each other and they forward the transactions that are relevant. In Bitcoin Cash case, uh, it's a gossiping network. It just forwards everything. So uh, a gossip network means every node, if it gets notice of a transaction, it just forwards it to every single other node it's connected with. So it spreads mm -hmm. across the entire network really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. With a lightning network that sits on top of this peer-to-peer -peer network, it goes. It has to do routing, and it goes from this node to that node to that node to that node, and however many hops. And I think probably yeah, the vast yeah, majority of lightning network, network transactions there's just one node directly to another. It's, it's more of a payment channel sure. than a, than a, a Yeah, so in, in, in that regard, Bitcoin Cash Network is way more robust uh, because it can always, like if one node goes down, it, it will always be rerouted um, to another node because it's just broadcasting everything to everyone and the, all the time. And, and the, the, the hops are, are pretty quick because mm -hmm. like the time this Doge client take to va validate a transaction before forwarding it is like really quick. Mm -hmm. um, so when you broadcast a transaction, it, it does a few yeah. hops and it lands on the, the receiver server and it can immediately be verified. <laughs> and you will know like as, as long as, and you will know that it will be uh, confirmed because Bitcoin Cash Network follows um, pretty much the uh, first seen first mind rule. So uh, within a few seconds, you can be pretty sure that there's not going to be a double spend, and no one else is going to double spend you and take your money. Uh, with with Lightning, you you, you need to Pens wait. fail often. Yeah, you like after a while, you might discover like, oh no, that that failed again. So and there's a video of me trying to make a Lightning transaction in Hong Kong a few months back, and the transaction failed. So I'm going to show everybody. I already scanned the QR code. I have my Bitcoin.com, Bitcoin Cash wallet here with 40 cents queued in. So we'll hit uh, the next button here. And when we're ready, like, we'll hit slide to send. Let's see. Let's count how long. When this screen turns orange, that means the transaction's been broadcasted to the network. So here we're sliding. Now my, my phone is doing the math because the private keys are on my phone right here to send it. There we go. Sent. And there's my candy. Like, I don't think that took very long at all. And before we started filming, I was looking, I installed a, and I see a lot of these trolls on the internet, they claim that like, you know, Bitcoin.com is a bunch of scammers who are scamming people. Like, I think calling something a wallet, <laughs> where did, where did that come from? <laughs> I think a lot of people calling something a wallet that's not a wallet, that's a scam. Mm -hmm. And so there's a, a number of uh, Lightning Network wallets that aren't wallets, they're just custodial bank things like displaying a website and I, I have one that was installed on my phone here already and uh, I was looking at it and uh, someone was nice enough to I guess I should say it in quotes again send me they sent me a uh, you know four cents on the lightning network but if you look at how the actual wallet works I didn't receive anything somebody else received it somebody else has the keys and they just displayed on my phone that mm -hmm. I have four cents uh, which is like a thousand Satoshis, I think, is what, what it is here. And then, uh, so I went, I wanted to withdraw the funds from the wallet, and I looked at how to do that. It says it's not possible because the trans, the fees on chain are more than the amount of money that I have. Like, how is that useful? Any, any, any thoughts or anything yeah, you guys there, want to add? There are a few things that come to mind. Um, so we'd had this discussion the other night on Friday. You know, the ultimate play is the user experience. Um, you know, there are several things that come to mind when I think about the Lightning Network that just uh, go against that. Number one, um, 
everybody has to run their own lightning node and you know scale this out to everybody on the planet using these currencies Maybe everybody on the planet's not going to run their own lightning node that's you know not even a reasonable thing to talk about number two the routing problem is is a serious computer science problem and For it's not decades. been solved yeah For it's decades. not been solved and uh, we, I heard three seconds, it might even be quicker, but within a number of seconds, you know, your Bitcoin cash transaction has propagated to 99% of the network all around the globe. And you know, there's user experience issues with the Lightning Network, like when you create a, uh, a receipt address, it has a certain time life, and then when it dies, you often see on Twitter when people are passing around Lightning transactions, somebody will be like, oh, it appears to be, have timed out, create a new address for me. I have one right here in my wallet. It says expired, which was like a payment request or something that somebody right. sent me. So. And then there's also this idea of watchtowers. So you have to have a third party which basically watches the channels whenever you go off of line because basically if one of the sides of the channel closes down, you can lose your money or it can be force reset. Yeah, and so, you know, there's a bunch of computer science problems about the Lightning Network which are really poor. So, for example, he has a thousand Satoshis in his wallet. They're stuck. Yeah, they're and, stuck. And, and let's clarify, I don't have a thousand yeah, Satoshis. Somebody in on a computer. Some other company else somewhere else it has it. Yeah, it may, oh, I hope they're holding it for me. <laughs> And and like e even if you tried to spend it and try to get it out, the the mining fee is probably sure. like going to be so big that you will you will not get above the dust limit, so it won't even be propagated. And so this opens up the door for fractional reserve banking because you can uh, you remember a few months ago Andreas Brecken had the largest lightning network by 52 percent or something, and he had I think 275 thousand dollars locked into this one channel, and then they graphed it out a visual graph of how all of the different flows were um, happening. And the majority of all the Lightning Network transactions were flowing through his node because he had the most liquidity, which made the routes work. So you can imagine in five years there will be a Coinbase Lightning Network node and a Wells Fargo Lightning Network node and a Visa Lightning Network node, and they'll basically talk to each other, and that will be the essence of the Lightning Network. And Not very decentralized. It, and it fraction sounds reserve. very, very complex well, and well, complicated. The for themselves, no if, if they're doing custodial wallets, and like, like this one that I have, maybe they're doing fractional reserve, maybe right. they're not. But it opens up the door for it. It sure does. And not being able custodial to custodial wallets in general, but like custodial wallets f for on-chain transactions, still also like you could sure. have. For, we, I mean, we saw with Mt. Gox, they're doing fractional reserve. Yep. With BTC. So. And so yeah, the plug for BCH here is that we were talking the other day about Schnorr signatures coming to Bitcoin Cash in the next hard fork in May, and those enable a bunch of uh, new generation of smart contracts. And one of the things they will enable is bi-directional payment channels similar to the Lightning Network. And we're going to get to see, in the same way that we scaled out the blocks on BCH, and we were able to see that you can keep the transactions very, very cheap and hit worldwide scale, we're also going to see that things like the Lightning Network work much better when the blocks are big because you can open and close and fund channels much quicker than you can in the BTC world where getting an on-chain transaction is going to cost $1,000 if they hit their goal. And they're bragging about that yeah. like it's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, it would be pretty fun to have a Lightning Network work way better on Bitcoin Cash <laughs> than on BTC. <laughs> and we should probably clarify, like, we're not opposed to the Lightning Network. Like, we hope they get it working. We, we, we like anything that works. And right mm -hmm. now, Bitcoin Cash works a million times better mm -hmm. than Lightning Network and works a million times better than BTC at this point. Like, mm -hmm. we like anything that works. If it works and it's useful, we'll use it. So I, I saw a thing on Reddit. Someone posted on Reddit uh, last week, uh, with the new game Satoshi Stack. Mm -hmm. So that that one was actually really cool mm -hmm. uh, because, like, have you measured the time between s you, the when you send a transaction from when it pops up on the, on the in the web browser? There's not much time to it's measure. It's like a <laughs> second, less than, a, less second, than a second, and it just appears. And yep. it seems like it's using web sockets to to make the UI super uh, fast. Yep. But it just shows like how how quick the Bitcoin. Uh, the Bitcoin cash deposit can really be because like sometimes you see this merchant processor and they're just painfully slow. It takes like ten sure. seconds, a minute sometimes. Well, that's and, like, just bad design work on the UI. Part, right? yeah. So yeah. like, I, I, come on, I send you a transaction already. You can update the UI now. Yeah. So yeah, I've been seeing you know Jack Dorsey from Twitter is a big investor in the Lightning Network, and of course he owns Square. So you know there's a lot of buzz right now about. Uh, Lightning Network sort of becoming this cash layer of the planet and to me again it just sort of speaks about not understanding the user experience. Everybody on the planet is not going to run their own Lightning node. We already know that. So therefore it's going to lead to centralization and everything we dislike about the current banking system, everything that Bitcoin Cash, you know, Bitcoin came about to solve, the Lightning Network just sort of re-implements um, it. So yeah, the Lightning Network is just a very, very poor user experience. End of story. We like good user experiences. If you want to have a good user experience, try out Bitcoin Cash with your Bitcoin.com wallet with a, another big update, I think, coming this week to the wallet with some more new features. So uh, stay tuned and uh, see you guys all in the next video. Yeah.